Good afternoon. On today's Angry Alien Bulletin, ever since the Soviet Union began putting Venera spacecraft on the surface of Venus, we have known that this is perhaps the most hostile planet in the solar system. Crushing pressures, unbelievably hot temperatures, the hottest planet actually in the entire solar system, even though it is not the closest, make this planet the most unlikely place that one would ever look for life. Indeed, for many decades, no scientist would even dare suggest such a thing. But it appears that Venus' upper atmosphere is not only habitable, but we are finding more and more evidence to suggest that life, at least bacterial life, may be thriving in the upper clouds of this amazing world. If that is indeed the case, it suggests that life may be thriving everywhere in the solar system as long as the conditions are right, which could change everything about how we see our place, not only in the solar system, but in the universe. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. To paraphrase Carl Sagan, of all the planets in the solar system, Venus would be the one most like hell. And I am forced to agree, with temperatures hovering around 900 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures in excess of what would be necessary to crush many submarines, the surface of this planet is definitely not suited to any kind of life as we know it. However, since 2020, there has been a slowly building amount of evidence to suggest that life in the clouds of Venus may not only be possible, but likely. In 2020, as many of you probably heard, a team of researchers in Cardiff, Wales, discovered the presence of phosphine in Venus's clouds, a biosignature gas that generally only appears as a result of very active bacteria. And although volcanic activity can produce this gas as well, it would take a tremendous amount of volcanic activity to account for all of the phosphine that was seen in Venus's clouds. And also new discoveries has made the volcanic possibility even less likely. We'll get to that in just a moment. Now, in 2021, other scientists began to throw cold water on this discovery, saying that the phosphine was not clear clearly detected, it could have been something else, it was fooling our instruments, and besides, there's no way that phosphine could exist in Venus's atmosphere because there's so little water there. Regardless of temperature, if you don't have liquid water, then the possibility of life is vanishingly small perhaps even impossible. But ever since then, the Cardiff researchers have been working very hard to prove their findings to be correct. They utilized the James Clark Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii to run not one, not two, but three more observation campaigns to peek into the clouds surrounding the planet, and the findings were quite impressive. In just one of those so-called campaigns, team member Dave Clements, who worked as a reader in the Astrophysics Laboratory at Imperial College London says that they received 140 times as much data as was uncovered in the original sweep and they found phosphine again and again and again and it seems that the phosphine disappears periodically as a result of sunlight when Venus completes a full rotation. And by the way, Venusian days are ridiculously long, precisely 243 days in length. And when this happens, any time that the atmosphere is exposed to sunlight, the phosphine is gradually destroyed, which once again makes the volcanic scenario very unlikely because you would have to have have constantly erupting volcanoes in order to replenish the phosphine on this regular of a basis, whereas active bacteria could replenish the phosphine quite easily. But in the course of their research, the Cardiff team discovered something even more significant, and that is the presence of ammonia quite a lot of ammonia actually, and that should absolutely not 
be in the Venusian atmosphere unless something is creating it. Why is this the case? Well, it's because the inner worlds of the solar system, at least Venus, Earth, and Mars, have predominantly oxygen atmospheres. Now, of course, that oxygen comes in different forms. On Venus, it's primarily CO2, and that's the case with Mars as well. It's just that Mars has a much thinner atmosphere, but both of them have atmospheres comprised largely of carbon dioxide, whereas here on Earth, it's oxygen nitrogen. But in all of those cases, gases like ammonia and phosphine should simply not be there. They're present in gas gas giants. For example, there's a lot of phosphine in the atmosphere of Saturn, but Saturn has a huge amount of hydrogen in the atmosphere, not oxygen. Therefore, the presence of phosphine, which is a hydrogen compound, is not all that surprising. But something like phosphine and ammonia, those are biosignatures in an atmosphere that is largely comprised of CO2, and it is very surprising to find it in the Venusian atmosphere. And by the way, there's even more evidence to confirm the presence of phosphine. Some research carried out by Rakesh Mogul, who's a professor of chemistry and biochemistry at the California State Polytechnic University, confirmed evidence from the Pioneer Venus large probe that phosphine had been detected way back in 1978. Quote, it showed phosphine inside the clouds of Venus at around the part per million level, which is exactly what we have largely been detecting, says Dr. Clements, who's a member of the Cardiff team. So it's beginning to hang together, but we still don't know what's producing it. But nevertheless, the presence of phosphine continues to be an amazing biosignature because, as I've explained, the volcanic scenario just doesn't seem very likely on Venus. On a planet like Io, perhaps, that has constantly erupting volcanoes. Okay, Io's a moon, not a planet. But you get where I'm coming from. Venus is just not that volcanically active of a planet. We have recently discovered that volcanoes are erupting on Venus from time to time, but not enough to account for all this phosphine in the upper atmosphere where the temperatures are just right for microbial life. Now, the ammonia is interesting in another regard. One of the biggest problems for life on Venus is the fact that there really isn't any water. There are liquid droplets in Venus's clouds, but it's acid sulfuric acid actually and that makes no sense as to any kind of life possibly surviving in that hostile environment but here's the thing ammonia inside these droplets of acid could act as a buffer to the acidity and bring it down to a level that's low enough for some types of even earthly bacteria to survive in it and so the exciting thing behind this would be if it's some kind of microbial life making the ammonia because that would would be a great way for it to regulate its own environment, according to a Dr. Greaves at the Royal Astronomical Society talks where all of this was announced. It would make its environment much less acidic and much more survivable. Clements went on to say, quote, we understand why ammonia might be useful for life. We don't understand how the ammonia is produced, just like we don't understand how the phosphine is produced. But there is ammonia there and it would have a functional purpose that we can understand. Now, of course, Dr. Greaves also warned that the presence of both phosphine and ammonia is not solid evidence for microbial life on Venus because there's a lot of missing information about the state of the planet. Quote, there's a lot of other processes that could go on and we just don't have any ground truth to say whether that process is possible or not. Now, what we really need is to take a better look at Venus atmosphere and in the course of this video you've seen a proposed human expedition to Venus as well as the da Vinci expedition that's going to be taking place in the near future however you may have noticed that the da Vinci expedition was not going to be looking for life not in its current configuration therefore NASA would have to change how the da Vinci mission is set up in order to look for all of this and that would require that NASA accept the possibility that there there could be life in the Venusian atmosphere. And up to this point, 
NASA has done very little to put life detecting equipment on any of their probes ever since the label release experiment on the Viking landers way back in 1976. And incidentally, Javier Martin Torres, a professor of planetary sciences at the University of Aberdeen, led a study that tried to debunk the discovery of phosphine back in 2021, and now he is retracting those claims. Quote, our paper emphasized the harsh and seemingly inhospitable conditions in Venus's atmosphere. The discovery of ammonia, which could neutralize the sulfuric acid clouds, and phosphine, a potential biosignature, challenges our understanding and suggests that more complex chemical processes might be at play. It's crucial that we approach these findings with a careful and thorough scientific investigation. Quite an about face, especially for somebody who seems to be very resistant to the idea of life in the clouds of Venus. In time, I believe that we are going to discover that life is as universal and as natural as gravity in our solar system. We're going to find life on Mars. We're going to find life on Venus. We're going to even find life beneath the ice on Europa, Enceladus, and perhaps Ganymede and other places and we will discover as time goes on that we are not quite so unique. We might not be as special as what we once thought we did and perhaps the prospect of intelligent life in other solar systems might not be so remote after all. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and as always, stay angry about space.